Hello there, welcome back to Gold Ward, and well, I like the Red Corn achievement. Last time, I believe we would have walked Muscovy, had it in a victory, but uh, Muscovy is definitely becoming dangerous. And I am definitely considering going after Novgorod here in order to vassalize them and thus get a lot of free calls. That is definitely something that is, uh, is on the plans. Of course, the problem with this is Poland, which will most likely be the world leader. But uh, I think we can do something with them. I just have to allow, well, be prepared. So that is exactly what we are going to do now. We're going to prepare for a war against, uh, well, most likely, uh, most likely just a straight up war with uh, with Poland and uh, Novgorod. We are going to accept these terms to uh, just get rid of those, uh, well, annoying, uh, annoying nationalists rather than losing men. I'm going to sacrifice the prestige. We are also working on the annexation of both the Kazan and Crimea, which we've done in a little bit over a year. So basically, that is the uh, that is the time gap that I have now to prepare myself for that. Uh, well, for the coming war, that is uh, that is basically it. I have <laughs> X number of days to get ready before we are going to fight another war that uh, probably against well quite a lot of people. We'll probably also start going after Uzbek and potentially Chagatai here too, in order to, well, make completely sure that we have this area under under lock and key, if you will. I think we'll also use some admin power to uh, get rid of some of the uh, inflation here. It's um, it's going to make well things really costly down the line, so I don't really want to do that. I could also just get completely rid of colonial maintenance because if I wage war against Chagatai. It won't really matter if I if I make this colony go full, so we're going to abandon this, not actually invest any more money in it. Uh, as I said, if I can take this and this, it doesn't really matter if uh, if I have that one colony, and I'd rather save up money that I can have more mercenaries for the war against Lithuania and Poland, rather than, uh, well, messing around with other stuff. I also do need, uh, indeed, more land, and that's what I wanted to do. So let's just put this on a gold board and that was the wrong region bad that is also the wrong thing there we go now the Russian region I still need five more provinces from being itself so I might get them during the war with uh, with Poland it could be a way to do this they're also currently in war against Milan for some weird reason but I don't expect them to well participate at all what we could do here is actually use the coalition mechanics going to uh, Basically, as going to collision against Poland. Now, I'm a little bit unsure how they changed that. I might not get anything out of it, but that is a potential plan. Now, I'll do a little bit of thinking and figure out how I want to handle this. Uh, I also have the Mughals and Timurids, Baluchistan, all our valid allies to Persia. So, uh, I'll do a little bit of thinking on what we'll do next, but we'll definitely wait for the annexation of both Kassan and uh, Crimea here to end. Well, this might be a problem. Nation of Ottomans, uh, faithful ally. Question you come to aid Hungary, Provence, Lorraine, Aragon, and Pope. Let's face it, this is a war that I will not have any problems with, but stability will be a little bit harsher because I will definitely have to boost my stability again. <clears throat> I did go to the step of actually. Uh, of actually, uh, well. to some degree. Uh, solving the issue by. Uh, well, it was expensive. That's what I'm trying to get at here. And again, this is not this is not beneficial that we have uh, well rebels never beneficial. We also had a loan that I had to pay. That's why I have a lot of money. And I also trained four units of horse riders to attempt to help here. Now I'm a little bit unsure how that battle will go. So we're actually going to place this army in Smolensk. And the reason for that is really simple. By placing that battle in Smolensk, I will have a secondary barrier or protection, if you will. If the assault fails, I can just send this army in, sacrifice less manpower, but still make it work. Denmark declaring war on Muscovy is probably one of the best things I've seen. Crimea has also been integrated and is part of our glorious nation, which is even better. Problem, they sent their army not where I need them. Uh, also just going to get rid of these, we're going to get rid of the ships, so we don't want them. I don't really want them, I, they serve me no purpose whatsoever so I have no need of the ships but I do want the troops because what we're going to do here 
with Denmark now messing up uh, Muscovy most likely, I would at least assume they will. Uh, yeah, this is also looking good. The war school here. There's basically twice three times as many men. Hungary is about to give up. Aragon is about to, well, give up as well. But Hungary is being quickly overrun here. And that means that I can rely on the Ottomans most likely to join a war here against Novgorod once their own war is uh, is done. So I'll be waiting for that war to end. And then we'll be going for the war here. The goal, of course, will be the assassination of Novgorod and also five Lithuanian provinces are part of Russia. So we'll be waiting for the war against Hungary to end. I should probably help with that, but I won't. I'll be saving money slash troops. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But for now, this should be the safest path that I can take to uh, get stronger. And I can take uh, stability here or inflation, I think, due to my cause and things like that, that the inflation will be the better thing to take here. The creation of Kassan has been done, which in itself is pretty good. It gives me actually, I cast a spell eye on Uzbek, which I could potentially use here to, well, take these two provinces. Do I want to right now? Probably not. Would it be beneficial, potentially? Can I vassalize Uzbek? Probably. So I think what we're actually going to do here is go for vassalization rather than anything else. Persia to return territory does like me a lot. I can also get an extra 200 here. So I'm a little bit unsure what I'll do next. Um, Novgorod is basically the same as Persia. Uzbek probably too. Uh, nope. But I can probably use them if I want to. But they're not. They're not currently a target. Let's just let's just leave it at that. So uh, we'll get ready here for a war against Novgorod. Well, I do have some good news here. There's actually Persian Patriots currently going, well, <clears throat> they're not happy with their current rulers. They want to go back to true Persia. And of course, that is really good for me. That means that Persia will get these three most likely without any interference from, uh, <clears throat> from myself, which is good. Now, the remains of, of course, the last Timuri province here, and so the Mughal provinces, which... Let's face it, they shouldn't be a problem, it's just a simple war, I can fabricate a claim. Uh, Karakonia might be a little bit of a bigger trick, so to speak. But they're allied with the Mughals, and as such, they are definitely definitely a potential target here. We'll also most likely be eating into Nogai's uh, promises. But uh, yeah, we'll be waiting for the war with Hungary here to end, then we can try and drag the Ottomans into that. I'll also still be working on converting my provinces into, well, sunny faith course are also very close to being done. We can do an upgrade to military tech here and we probably should. And now we're going to increase our time neighbor bonus. None of these are probably going to get any better so we're going to take it right now while we can. And with that we get the Archibus which gives us military tax plus 0.25. Important for surviving in battle. Come with increased by 2. Important for delivering damage. And infantry shock 2.3 again. Not that important. We don't use a whole lot of infantry but uh, would help with the infantry dealing damage during a shock phase. But uh, yeah, the war currently with uh, Muscovy and Denmark is going at a stalemate and that's mostly due to battles. So uh, we definitely could be in a very good position here in time to come. <clears throat> I'm also a little bit uh, interested in actually going for Vassalized Livonian order if I can. That means that I would get some force in this area pretty much for free. And there we go. Ottomans got their peace with Hungary, a couple of provinces I think, at least Maro's here, that is fine. Now the big question is, will they join me if I declare war on Novgorod? And they will. That is a very important. Now if I got even max in my armies, I'm perfectly fine. I am not going to use any administrative power to reduce the inflation, although I am tempted to. I will not do that, and the reason is really simple. I need five provinces here. Those five provinces are not going to be cheap to call. But we are going to go for war here on Novgorod. I'm going to be relying a lot my uh, relaxation come first. Yeah, we'll go with this one. It's cheaper. It's enforced vassalage I'm going for here. So we're definitely going with tribal conquest. We are calling in the Ottomans. And I, as I said here, I will be attempting to keep my armies out of the reach of the battle. I kind of want to have the Ottomans sacrifice their manpower and force in order to win this rather than, well, me doing it, of course, we are strategic, 
we're trying to do this in a strategic manner after all. We did win that first battle, and with that we should be able to completely eradicate the force here, and already that gives us 13% war score. Since the Ottomans are, well, sweet, nice enough to march into their lands. Now, I'm a little bit unsure how many, uh, how big this unified alliance is. It's pretty damn big on their side, so I'm definitely going to have to rely on the Ottomans, but I'm also pretty sure here that due to the unified alliance basically size, I will have to conquer probably a lot of con uh, provinces here myself. But uh, we'll hang back, see how it goes, and I think I might be trouble here. Yeah. This is a pretty bad, big army, that's 25k men. But we do have more forces closer, and since the Ottomans are actually trying to attack it, we're going to join in. Because why not? It's basically beneficial to join into that battle, although I did get there first, sacrifice a manpower for no reason. Uh, but yeah, we did win here a very important battle. Uh, we won the battle of Novgorod as well. And that is important for several reasons, but uh, most of the fact that I can now siege some provinces here, more or less, painlessly. And I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It was four provinces, not five. Counting mistake on my side. I think, unless I've got something wrong here. We'll figure that out very, very soon, though. So, there we go. We have now set up the siege squad. I should be, well, not perfectly safe. A little safe. And I'm going to keep, basically, an army here in backup, but... If they join their entire army and comes to attack, I will not be able to hold them back. The mercenary army will for the time being just take care of Novgorod. But uh, this is the end of this episode, and I will see you next time. Feel free to come with comments, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And hopefully, we can vassalize Novgorod and take down Lithuania Poland next time. Bye!